Professor Ruina had derived this equation, uh, derived these expressions, uh, just doing a just doing a small vector change. But I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another way of getting the same expression without uh, doing what he did. So the first thing I want to do is I want to write E R in terms of i and theta. So look at this figure. E R is simply i cosine theta. So cos theta i, and that's going to be j co cosine of 90 minus theta. So that's going to be cos 90 minus theta is sine theta. So this is going to be uh, cos theta i plus sine theta j. Right? Similarly, I can write e theta as, so I find what e theta is, and that is simply i sine theta, that's going to point in a direction opposite to e theta. So I'm going to write sine theta i. And I can take j and, and drop it on e theta. So that's going to be j cosine theta along e theta direction. So cosine theta j. OK, so I've tried to express uh, the moving frame in terms of fixed frame. Now let me, get, let me try to differentiate this expression. So if I take the first derivative of this term, I would get co minus sine theta uh, i plus cos theta i dot. Right? Just a chain rule of this term. Similarly, I can do a chain rule on that term to get uh, I'm missing something. So this should be sine theta, theta dot, because uh, theta is changing with time, right, as the as the moving frame rotates. Similarly, I can take the derivative of this term. That's going to give me uh, plus cosine theta, theta dot j plus sine theta j dot. OK, again, chain rule. Now, I know that i and j are fixed. So this is going to be 0. All I'm left with is e r dot equals, uh, I'm going to pull the theta dot outside. I'm going to get minus sine theta i plus cosine theta j. OK, let me uh, uh, now plug in the value of this expression here. This is simply e theta, right? So that's going to be theta dot e theta. If you look at this, the same thing as that over here. OK, let me take the first derivative of the second uh, expression here. So e theta dot equals Again, I can use the chain rule. I'm going to uh, set i i dot equal to 0. And that's going to give me cosine theta theta dot along i. The second term is 0. This is going to give me minus sine theta theta dot j. So I'm going to pull the minus sine and the theta dot outside and I would get, I would get uh, this expression. And as you see, what I have sitting in here is nothing but er. So that is theta dot er. OK, any questions? So to summarize, what I have here is E r dot equals uh, theta dot e theta and e theta dot equals minus theta dot times e r. Now, if you think this is a little hard to remember, that there's a positive sign here and there's a negative sign here, and how do you remember that? Uh, 
there's, there's, an, there's another way you can write these two expressions. And that might be simpler to remember, actually. So you can also write the same thing as theta dot k cross er and e theta dot equals theta dot k cross e theta. OK, so let's see if this and this is the same thing. OK, so er, e theta, k. This is a triad, just like i, j, k is a triad. And I want to do k cross er. k cross er is e theta. E theta. Similarly, k cross e theta is minus er. So that's minus er. So, so you can probably remember. Uh, maybe this is hard to remember. This is probably remember this. Much easier to remember, I think. Okay, any questions on this? Okay, this is something which we'll use again and again uh, in, in, uh, in, this, uh, in this class. Okay, so having got those two expressions, let's, let's try to derive uh, velocity acceleration in, in ERE theta. So let's consider a point G. Uh, at, at a distance L from the origin, and uh, E R E theta is oriented along O G, as the way I've shown it there, and this is of course theta. So I can write the vector O to G as L times ER, so L times a vector along OG. And so let's take the first derivative of uh, this vector. So I'm going to just ignore O because O is the origin. So RG is L times ER, and BG is the first derivative of RG, and that's L times ER dot. But ER dot is L theta dot E theta. OK? I can find the acceleration by simply taking the first derivative of velocity. And you have to do that to differentiate this term. So L theta double dot E theta plus L theta dot E theta. So this is just chain rule again. But I know what e theta dot is. And theta dot is simply uh, minus theta dot er. So I'm going to sub that in. L theta dot e theta uh, minus L theta dot square er. OK, so to summarize, the vector rg is L er. Uh, Bg is L theta dot E theta, and acceleration is L theta double dot E theta minus L theta dot square Er. Okay. Any questions on this? Yeah. Um, e dot r as um, e dot s. Okay, so what what is this? So k is a unit vector, just like i j e r e theta. E r e theta is our vector just one here. I'm just trying to give you a mnemonic to remember this expression. I think this is hard to remember because you need to remember which is negative, which is positive. So here's another way to remember it, which is uh, er is k cross theta dot times k cross er, and this is k cross e theta. Now, why is this true? It's because if you take the cross product, k times e theta, so I have to take cross product of k and e theta. So I have to go from k to e theta this way. So that gives me 
negatively okay? because convention is counterclockwise is positive. So k cross c theta is er, but it's clockwise. So the negative sign. So they check. Any other question? Okay, so let's uh, move on. Let's let's solve a problem with uh, the equation we have on the board here. So uh, let's do uh, let's find the equations of a inverted pendulum. Okay, so the setup is. Inverted pendulum in, uh, in a gravitational field, and uh, this length is L, the mass is m, and what is uh, that's pretty much it. This is the mass of this rod, by the way. Massless rod. Okay, the question is. Find the equation of motion. Is the problem clear? Okay. So first thing to do for you know, any mechanics problem here is we want to draw a free body diagram of the system. So in this case mass m, which is uh, attached to this uh, rod, and so this would give me a, a force or a tension in, in, in a direction along along the rod. And there's an mg, because this mass is in the opposite. That's my three body diagram. OK. Now, since this is a problem which, which involves something rotating and uh, things move going in circles, I'm better off using a moving coordinate frame as opposed to uh, using ij. So I'm going to stick to a moving coordinate frame. So I'm going to call this er, and I'm going to call this e theta. Now, be very careful. Do not, if you make e theta this way, then that's going to violate our uh, uh, it's going to be a left-handed system. We want to ensure that e theta is in such a direction that e r cross e theta gives us positive k in this direction. So that's why e theta is this way and not that way. OK, so uh, I've drawn the coordinate frame. Now let's just try to write the equations of motion. So L and B, by the way, this is going to be one of the few ways in which we'll get the equation for motion. So first method, we're going to use LMB, uh, which says that F equals MA. Uh, if we call this point G, call this point O, that's G. And so F is all the external forces. That's T times ER, but it's acting in the negative direction of ER. And there is mg, which, which is acting along minus i. And that should be equal to ma. But k is what I have over here. So that's h. ag is l theta double dot e theta minus l theta dot square er. OK, now I have this equation, and this equation that I'm not interested in the tension. I do not want my final expression to have the tension in it. Uh, I don't care about it. So I'm going to try to eliminate tension from this equation. 
How can I eliminate the tension? If I can dot this whole expression with a vector which is normal to ER, then I would effectively cancel the effect of the tension, or the, the tension would disappear from this equation. So I'm going to take this expression and dot it with a vector perpendicular to ER. And a vector which is perpendicular to ER is just E theta. So that is going to be dotted with E theta. And that's going to give me ER dot E theta minus mg i dot E theta equals m L theta double dot E theta dot E theta minus L theta dot squared dot e theta. Okay, now uh, if two vectors are perpendicular, the dot product is zero, so those two terms drop, drop off. Uh, I still have to figure out what this term is and what this term is. Now, a dot product of two unit vectors is simply one, right? Okay, so I need to find this, and now what? A figure which really is helpful for me when I really solve, when I try to get this uh, dot product is, is uh, I'm going to just draw the coordinate frame again over here with ER E theta. Uh, and I know that the angle theta is an angle made by ER with I. So that's going to be theta, that's going to be theta, and this is going to be 90 minus theta. So with this figure, I'll be able to figure out what i dot e theta is. Now the definition of a dot product is that it is magnitude of i, magnitude of e theta, times <laughs> cosine of the angle between i and theta. So cosine of the angle between i and theta is just cosine sum of these angles, right? Cosine 90 minus theta plus theta plus theta. So that's going to cancel out this. I'm going to get cosine 90. Uh, maybe I should just write it down. So theta plus 90 minus theta plus theta. See the whole thing? And theta theta cancels off. So what this gives me is 1, 1. Cosine of 90 plus theta remember is just sine of theta, negative sine of theta. Uh, okay, so let me just rewrite those that expression that I have over here. Uh, that's simply m g sine theta is all on the left hand side and on the right hand side I have m l theta double dot. And so the equation of motion is theta double dot equals g divided by L times sine theta. Okay, any questions? Okay, so that was just one way of getting the equation of motion for uh, uh, inverted spin term. Uh, let's do it another way. So, I have used linear momentum balance, but the question is can you derive this using angular momentum balance? So, I'm going to try to do the same thing, try to get the equation of motion using uh, angular momentum balance. And a smart choice for angular momentum balance would be this point O, because the tension force passes through O, and so that force would not figure out in the equation of motion, and, uh, and I'm not interested in tension. So I'm going to do angular momentum balance about the point O. So angular momentum balance tells me that H dot with respect to O should be equal to the net, uh, the net external moment about the same point O. Now what is... Uh, H dot about O, it is R G with respect to O crossed with M A G. Right? 
and the external forces are R G with respect to O. And just to be complete, let me just write the whole uh, both the forces. And you see that one of the forces actually drops off from the equation. There's a tension force uh, drops off. So I'm going to write uh, minus T times E R uh, minus M G I. I'm just trying to be more complete in putting this expression. So, so you see that uh, this term actually drops off from the from the equation of motion. Okay, so let me just try to uh, write this. So this is uh, L times E R, and so is this. Again, okay, E G is something which I already have on the board there, right on top. So I'm going to just sub in this for A G and R. So uh, L times E R crossed with mass times uh, A G. A G is L theta double dot E theta minus L theta dot square E R. That should be equal to L times E R crossed with minus T. E R minus M G I. Any questions? Okay, so uh, let's take the cross product. So uh, for the first term, I have M L square E R uh, M L square theta double dot uh, E R cross E theta minus M L square theta dot square E R cross E R. And that should be equal to minus T L E R cross E R minus M G L E R cross I. So let's see what, what terms cancel. So this is uh, zero, right? Because two ve parallel vectors have a zero cross product. And so is that. OK, ER cross E theta is just k. I still have to figure out what ER cross I is. So uh, ER cross I, you can, you can find that by looking at this figure. You want to find, I want to find what E R cross I is. So I want to take the cross product of R with I. And so I need to go counterclockwise, sorry, clockwise. So that's going to give me uh, negative K times the sine of the angle between E R and I, right? That's the definition of cross product. So this thing is sine theta times minus k. <coughs> so let me just put this, uh, uh, so let me put the simplified expression here. ML square theta double dot equals uh, minus minus is plus times k equals m g l sine theta. Okay, and so I'm going to take this expression dotted with k to get uh, theta double dot equals g divided by l times sine theta. Okay, which is the same as uh, what I got using the Yeah, question. Okay, so how do you figure this out? So, uh, what is, you want to take the cross product of two vectors, and those vectors are ER and I. So, ER crossed with I. So, look at this figure. You want to take the cross product of this vector with that vector. So, you want to turn from ER to I. So, you do that, you have to, you have to go clockwise. So, 
that's going to give a negative k. And uh, remember, the cross product is gives you the sign of the involves the sign of the angle between those two vectors. The sign of the angle, this angle is theta, and so it's going to be sine theta. Okay, I find drawing this figure is really helpful when I solve uh, problems involving moving frame. Uh, okay, is that clear? Any, any other question? Okay, let's let's redo the same problem in yet another way. So, can anybody uh, tell me? Another way of solving the same problem, energy method. Let's try to do it by energy method. Okay, so so method three is energy. Conservation. So, this is my pendulum. <coughs> it's an in gravitational field, and mind you, this is not a free body diagram. Okay, I'm just drawing this so that I can find the energy of the system about, say, this datum. So, the energy. The total energy of the system is kinetic plus potential. The kinetic energy is half m bg dot with bg. Right? The potential energy is is just mg l cosine of theta. <laughs> Right? It's the energy due to uh, this component, L cosine theta. Okay, so what what is Vg? Vg is L theta E theta. This is from right here. So I have to dot this with L theta dot E theta. And that gives me uh, L square theta dot square e theta dot e theta is one. So let me just try to simplify this. Uh, I write it down again. So e t is half m L square theta dot square plus m g L cos theta. Uh, now, we know that the energy of the system is constant. It doesn't change with time because it's a conservative system, right? So if I take the first derivative of this whole expression, that's going to be 2 theta dot theta double dot plus m g l minus sine theta theta dot equals 0. So I can pull the theta dot out. In fact, I can pull the l also out. m l, well, I can pull the mass also. So I'm going to write m l theta dot and l theta double dot plus g minus g sine theta uh, equals 0. Now this expression is, is true when this term is 0, this term is 0, and those two terms can never be 0. Now theta dot is 0 sometimes in motion, right? Sometimes when this, this pendulum can have 0 velocity. That's not true all the time. So we're going to just ignore the fact, ignore this term. And we're going to set this term equal to 0. So that gives us theta double dot equals 
divided by S times sin theta. Okay, any questions on this? Yeah. Okay, last part is cut from here to here. Okay. So this expression is zero. When is this expression zero? It's when this is zero, this is zero, this is zero, and this is zero. Right? Now m is not zero, l is not zero. So both of these terms or one of them have to have to be equal to zero. Be equal to zero. But the velocity, theta dot is a velocity, is zero sometimes in the motion. It's not zero all the time. Maybe one millisecond or or so, right? When when the pendulum is Maybe if you launch in the right way, it will be at zero speed here or zero speed there. That's, that's not always true. What's always true is that since that is not zero all the time, remember these are functions of time. Theta is a function of time. Theta double dot, theta dot is a function of time. But we know that theta dot is not always zero. It's zero sometimes. So it must be that this is equal to zero all the other times. Or can you find an instant of time when theta dot is not equal to zero? You can, right? For that case, this should be equal to zero. Does that make sense? OK. Any other question? OK. So uh, uh, well, there's yet another way of uh, Deriving the same equation and won't take me much time to do that. So I think I can just derive that. Over. expression which which is a so, sort of little used expression in this project, not yet used, or maybe used it for very few special problems. That is the path is equal to the, uh, the rate of change of kinetic energy. Now what is the path? The path is due to the external forces. And the external forces are there it is the figure. Okay. Here it is. So the external forces are P and mg. And so I need to find what is the work done, or well, the power due to T and mg. So the power is going to be T times uh, velocity of g, vector T times velocity of g, uh, minus mg i times velocity of g. And that should be equal to half mbg uh, dot Right. So how did I get the power? Power is, represents the work done by external forces. Two external forces are tension and mg. The tension acts at g and mg also acts at g. So the work done or the power due to uh, these two forces is just going to be tension times the velocity of g. And that's what I have, mg times velocity of g. OK, so the tension is uh, simply minus T times ER. Right? You can see that from here. It's T times, it's along the negative ER direction. This dotted with L theta dot ER. Oh, sorry, it's L theta dot along that T theta direction minus mg i dot L theta dot times e theta. That should be equal to half m bg dot bg. bg dot bg is something which you already found. right? It's, it's just this L square theta dot. OK, so we have to carry out this cross product, sorry, dot products. Now that is going to be 0. Because er and e theta are orthogonal, I still have to find what i dot e theta is, and for that, 
going to go back to this figure. I need to find what the dot product is between i and theta. So it's simply magnitude of i, magnitude of uh, e theta, which is 1, times cosine of the angle between them. So the cosine of the angle between them is 90 minus theta plus theta plus theta. That should be 90 plus theta. This is going to be cosine 90 plus theta. And that is simply minus sine theta. So let me just simplify this. So this is going to give me M G uh, L theta dot minus sine theta equals uh, half L square M L square theta dot square the first derivative. E k dot. That gives me m g l theta dot sine theta equals m l square divided by 2 times 2 theta dot theta double dot. The 2's cancel off, the l's cancel off, m cancels off, and again I can get rid of theta dot because it's the same argument that theta dot is 0 sometimes. So that's going to give me. Uh, g sine theta equals uh, L theta double dot and I get the same equation. Okay, any questions? No questions. Okay, so let's, let's move on to the next problem. So there are, there are a number of ways of uh, getting the equations of motion. In fact, one way which I did not discuss is uh, you don't have to do this problem in, in this moving frame E r e theta. You can solve the same problem in uh, i j coordinate frame. You can assume the acceleration to be x double dot i plus y double dot j. Uh, resolve everything in terms of i j. Get the answer. Uh, the only reason why I chose E r e theta is that the calculations are much shorter in this frame as opposed to the i j frame. Okay. Uh, okay. So, the next question is also related to the inverted equation. So, so, if I tell you that I start the pendulum right here with a velocity of uh, square root 2 gl then I want you to find what the velocity is at the topmost point so that's l that's m so is the question clear Given that you start the velocity in this position with this velocity, can you find the velocity when the, when the pendulum is vertical? Okay, so uh, now you could use the equations that you have over here. That is, we know that the equation of, uh, so, so, you just derive the ordinary differential equation for the system. And the equation was theta double dot minus g divided by l times sine theta equals 0. Now, do you know the analytical solution to this? If you knew the analytical solution, you can, you can get the velocity, right? Okay. Because you can you know the position versus time, you can find the velocity versus time. Does anybody know how to solve this equation analytically? So, turns out that solution to uh, this problem is well known, right? You know how to solve this analytically. The, pr the problem is that this expression here, which I have over here, which is uh, the small angle approximation, is only valid for 
small motions of the pendulum. It's not valid for big motions. Like in this case, you have a 90 degree sweeping angle. So you cannot find the solution to this and say, you can't use the solution to this particular expression as the answer to this problem because this is uh, big motion, like 90 degree motion. So there is an analytical way. There's something called elliptical integrals which help you to solve this problem, but we're not going to go get into that. Now, one way you could do this is if you have MATLAB, then you can write, you can rewrite your ODEs as uh, theta dot equals omega and omega dot equals g l sine theta. Give the initial conditions uh, in MATLAB. This is the ODE, the initial conditions are uh, at t equals 0, theta equals uh, pi by 2, theta dot equals 2GL, and then you need to find, so you need to simulate this uh, pendulum and see when, find the time at which it reaches the vertical position, find uh, theta dot when theta goes to zero. And you can do this by inspection. Once you have a plot of uh, theta versus time and theta dot versus time, you can just read off from the graph what the velocity would be in the vertical position. Yeah, question? Um, yeah, is, how is theta dot uh, root 2 GL? OK, I screwed up the dimension. Uh, so I think this is not dimensionally consistent. Does it look better now? Sorry about that. Oh, overall, yeah. Yeah, so, sorry, I, I made a mistake though. Yeah, thanks. So, it was dimensionally inconsistent there. OK, so uh, you, you can do that. But remember, you're not, in this particular problem, I don't care what the time is. I just want to find the velocity over here. Is there any other way I can do it without really integrating this equation? Could, could, could anybody think of a way in which I can get the velocity here without doing this complicated OD calculation in MATLAB? Yeah. Yeah, so energy always, in this case, energy is it's probably a much simpler thing to do. So, so here's another way you can do it. Uh, so let's call this one. Let's call this position 2. Okay, how much time do I have? So the energy at 1 should be energy at 2. Now I'm going to choose this to be my uh, datum, that is for my potential energy. So this is going to be 0 potential. The energy at 1 is half m L dot square theta dot square. This velocity is the same that I got from uh, right here. That's the velocity, right? That's the question for the velocity. So that's half m v square. And the total energy at 2 is going to be m g l. That's the potential energy. Plus, this, this uh, particle is also going to have uh, kinetic energy is going to be half m theta dot square l square. So let me call this 2 and let me call this 1. And so uh, m drop off theta 1 dot is 2g divided by l l square uh, equals g l plus theta square L square divided by 2 and so this cancels off uh, 2 cancels off and you see that theta 2 dot is simply 0. So this, this pendulum just comes to rest in its uh, uh, upward position. Okay, any questions on this? So this the, the take home message is really for 
most of the, so almost all these problems, you always want to think of two ways. One is free body diagrams, equations of motion, integrate them, or energy is sometimes an easier way to solve these problems. Okay, thank you. Yeah. It's uh,